Welcome to worship. Welcome whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey. Welcome to Sunday worship at Pilgrim Church in Harwichport, where we believe that everyone is a child of God and a gift to the world, and where we also believe that the Bible is relevant for our lives today. This week, the news of the insurrection in the Capitol on January 6th seems to have only gotten worse. The photographs of violence are appalling. And on top of that, we are approaching 400,000 people who are now dead or dying from COVID in this country. As this pandemic wears on us, the news just gets worse. And so we gather today seeking answers from our faith. Most of us are just putting one foot in front of the other and trying to stay well and carry our burdens with some grace. As he started his ministry, Jesus came to a troubled world too, but he brought a new approach to life, a fresh perspective that gave people hope no matter what they had to face. His clear understanding of how the world works made sense to people. His honesty may be exactly what we need today. We'll talk more about that in just a few moments. Our services are broadcast on Facebook, on YouTube, and on our website, pcchp.org. If you're here on Cape Cod and you hear the church bells ringing at 5.30 on Tuesday this week, you need to know that we'll be joining other churches from coast to coast in ringing our bells to invite people to remember the toll of COVID-19 and to pray together for peace in our nation. Now, let us come into God's presence with a song. Now, let us unite our hearts in prayer. Eternal source of life, you hold our lives and all creation in your hands. Yet you have entrusted so much of your tender creation to our care too. Such a rare privilege and responsibility. Grant us courage, O God, for the living of these days. Grant us wisdom, which is stronger than despair. Teach us the kind of humility that comes to those who have real self-esteem. Teach us to be brave in caring for others, bold in advocating for the earth, 
and creative in our strategies for justice. As we begin a new year and repent of so much that needs to change, Holy One, open our eyes that we may see how you are surrounding us this day with your love and your wisdom. Help us to be kind in our everyday interactions. Open our hearts to the tidal wave of changes that come with forgiveness and heal our nation. Heal our racism, our discrimination, our intolerance. Heal the divides between regions and parties. We say all this and so much more in Christ's name, as with his words we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We so appreciate your generous support of Pilgrim Church. Your gifts have enabled us to continue this ministry and also to make our services available to an even wider audience. If you normally make a pledge during worship, you can do that now. And if you're new to Pilgrim Church and feel inspired to send a gift today, we appreciate your support. You can donate now on Facebook or the homepage of our website, pcchp.org. Or if you prefer, you can mail your contribution to Pilgrim Church, 533 Route 28, P.O. Box 247, Harwichport, Massachusetts, 02646. Again, we're very grateful for your generous support, especially now.
a sermon series on grace for this month, but the events in our capital have changed my thinking and my theme has really become who we are. I'll be using the same Bible readings that I had chosen for each week. Today our scripture comes from John 1, 43 to 49. The next day, Jesus wanted to go into Galilee, and he found Philip. Jesus said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the hometown of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we found the one that Moses wrote about in the law and the prophets, Jesus, Joseph's son from Nazareth. And Nathaniel responded, Can anything good come from Nazareth? Can anything from Nazareth be good at all? And Philip said, Come and see. So Jesus saw Nathaniel coming toward him and said about him, Now here is a genuine Israelite in whom there's no deceit. Nathaniel asked him, How do you know me? And Jesus answered, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. And Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are God's son. You are the king of Israel. When Jesus came from Nazareth to the fishing villages along the Sea of Galilee, folks were said to drop everything, literally drop their nets, to listen to him. Were these people so gullible? Were they bored with life? What made them leave their nets, their family businesses, and go after this itinerant rabbi? Somehow, Jesus met them where they were and changed the way they saw themselves and their lives. I keep coming back to the question people have been asking for a week and a half now, 10 days. As new images emerged all week of more chaos and violence in the nation's capital on the 6th of January, we keep saying in disbelief, this is not who we are. In fact, the plot seems to be thicker than anyone realized originally but it's not how we see ourselves, and it feels like we've lost our way. So the question today is, what does our faith tell us about who we are? In the first place, in our story, Jesus says, we need to speak the truth. We are people who talk honestly, and we need more honesty. 
Jesus was attracted to honest people. When he found Nathaniel, Philip recommends Jesus to Nathaniel, but Nathaniel says, what good can come from Nazareth? He thought Jesus was a hayseed. It's the same sentiment that we see in people who put down folks who live in a red state or a blue state. Jesus hears the insult, but he doesn't take it personally. Instead, he's drawn to Nathaniel. He wants a truth teller on his team. He doesn't crave flattery. He praises Nathaniel. Here's a genuine Israelite in whom there's no deceit. As a nation, I think last week was a wake-up call. We need to be more honest about what's true, starting with who won our national election. What happened in Washington last week was the culmination of many myths and outright lies. It was the explosion of anger that happens when deception goes unchecked. In the New York Times last weekend, David Blight, a Yale historian, wrote an op-ed piece. And he compared the myths that President Trump's supporters told themselves with those of Southerners after Reconstruction. Now, Blight didn't mince his words. He called out the conspiracy theories rehearsed now for several years on social media. He condemned myths about large corrupt cities full of black and brown people who are manipulated by liberal elites. He called out and condemned stories about a socialist movement determined to tax people into subservience. He condemned myths about liberal media determined to crush family values. He condemned myths about corrupt non-white immigrants. And he called out the myths about schools and universities that are supposed to be teaching students to hate America. He said all these myths have formed a toxic brew that exploded into violence last week. We can all bewail the violence but until we come clean about what fuels it, our frustration won't change anything. Why? Because we won't get to the root of the issues underneath this insurrection. Tempers are apparently so hot now among lawmakers this weekend that congressional leaders have set up metal detectors at the doors of Congress because some members of the chamber want to bring firearms in. We need to talk honestly with one another across parties and lines about gun violence. In this country with 300 million guns, one for every man, woman, and child, just about, we can't heal until we talk about our different views about the Second Amendment. We've started a national conversation about race, but we still have a long way to go. And on this particular weekend, as we celebrate Dr. King's birthday, we need to address the stark contrast between how the National Guard and police responded to this recent largely white crowd and to the Black Lives Matter demonstrations last summer. People of conscience should be honest about their outrage at the contrast between how lenient police were last week and how hard they were at the Black Lives Matter march on Washington. That phrase, come to Jesus, means we have to come clean. We have to make an honest accounting of ourselves and I believe that's what we do 
need a come to Jesus meeting in our country, a moment when we come clean with ourselves as a nation. And secondly, Jesus says, we need to speak up. Jesus spoke up. He spoke up for those who were left by the side of life's road. He spoke up for children. He spoke up for women. He spoke up for those who were made slaves by their own despair. His words changed the world. And I think Jesus was attracted to Nathaniel because in him, he could see someone who wasn't afraid to speak his truth. In my own life, so many times, I've chosen to keep the peace rather than say what I knew to be true for me. I've often lived to regret my silence. Even now, it is so tempting to just become more and more passive and tell ourselves that we can't make waves because we're in the middle of a pandemic and things are hard enough. But too often silence is seen as acceptance. One thing I've always liked about the United Church of Christ is that it is full of churches that have found their voice by speaking up together. It can be a frightening thing to be a lone voice, but together our voices are louder and harder to dismiss. Many of us saw that the demonstrators last week who came to the Capitol brought large signs about Jesus. And while I support everyone's search for God, I was pleased to read the UCC statement this week in response to the faith component in this mob. They said, and their statements on the website, ucc.org, but here's what they said in part. We must stand up to and speak out against Christian nationalism, especially when it inspires acts of violence and intimidation, including vandalism, bomb threats, arson, hate crimes, and attacks on houses of worship. The UCC joined with other churches in the country in a public statement that says, whenever we worship at a church, mosque, synagogue, or temple, America has no second-class faiths. All are equal under the U.S. Constitution. And as Christians, we must speak in one voice, condemning Christian nationalism as a distortion of the gospel of Jesus and a threat to American democracy. With healing words this week, the United Church of Christ speaks with gentle strength. We need to speak up too. And finally, Jesus says, we need vision. Jesus created a movement by going from village to village and in each place he listened to people and healed them. I don't think he arrived with a five-point strategy plan. He made some mistakes along the way, but he believed in people. And talking to individuals day by day, he refined his ideas and created a vision for our world. I'm very encouraged by our community response to Black Lives Matter last week, last summer, when a youth from this church, Susanna Brown, organized a march for racial justice here in Harwichport. A thousand people showed up with masks and marched peacefully. I was encouraged too by the demonstrations on our church lawn all summer, organized by our prayer group we didn't really look radical. Some mature ladies with handmade signs, but we stood for something and people got what we were doing. Several community members spontaneously joined us. Young adults donated cases of water. 
A teenager took her picture with us saying it was the highlight of her vacation. And dozens of families driving by thanked us. Was there unanimous support for seeing Black Lives Matter signs in the lawn of our church? No. Did some people make obscene gestures? Yes. But they were in the vast minority. Sometimes that's the price of being a disciple. The more we can make space for conversations in every village and town in this country, the more we'll know who we are and who we want to be. Let us pray. Wake us up, Holy One. Wash over us with your Holy Spirit. Give us the courage to be honest. Help us to repent of those things we're not proud of. And help us to dedicate our lives again here at the start of 2021 to a truly new beginning. Amen. And now may the living Christ go with you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, behind you to encourage you, and before you to show you the way. Amen.